Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by TaylorMade. Yes, it was a glorious day to have the PGA returning to competitive action. And the big story on this Thursday centers around Harold Varner III. A lot of eyes went to Harold Varner III as one of the people of color on the PGA Tour after what happened to George Floyd and the action that transpired in our society and globally uh, once his death occurred. So he gave his opinions, his thoughts via social media, via with an interview with Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA Tour. And this week he's been asked about what needs to change in our society, and he's given his opinion. I asked him after his round today, has he been able to compartmentalize all of that, or did he use everything that has happened over the last few weeks as an inspiration? Um, I mean, I didn't think about it out there on the golf course today. It was kind of when I was on the golf course, it kind of got me in my, in my zone. I love playing golf. I've been uh, fortunate enough to do this for a living so when I got on the golf course I wasn't thinking about anything but right now you know obviously I know we're still in a we're in a tough spot and uh, we'll handle it whenever I get done work and uh, you know I just I just want to play well. Off the golf course before the round uh, after the round throughout the few weeks do you feel like you're playing for more than just Harold Varner out there? Yeah I, I for sure think that um, but the platform I have is through golf, so I know playing well is a part of that. So you got to focus on the most important thing, and that's playing well. So it, um, just that's what I tried to do, you know, focus on that. Um, I had a lot of fun, you know, I had a great pairing. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show how, you know, life is precious. So you just uh, take every day for what it is. Harold Varner the third, you get the impression now, is really concentrating on trying to continue his strong play throughout the week and finally win on the PGA Tour. And I can tell you he has something to prove. He had a, an opportunity to win earlier this year in Los Angeles at Riviera. He was in the final group on the final day but finished outside the top ten, and he finally wants to get over that hump, cross the finish line, and win on this tour. Rich? All right, Todd, remember he was also in the final group of the PGA Championship at Beth Page with Brooks Kepka, Kepka winning. Uh, born in Akron, Ohio, now you saw he reps Jordan Brand, you saw it on his hat, but being from Akron, he's a big LeBron fan, was raised in Gastonia, North Carolina, played Muni golf, uh, career best 38 in the FedEx Cup standings last season. Randall just one of three African-American players on tour along with Tiger and Cameron Champ. A bit of serendipity here given the events of the past uh, two weeks. What struck you as you watched Harold play so brilliantly today? Just one, he's been very busy. He's on the Player Advisory Council and even though he was, I, I think, humble saying that he had uh, had the opportunity to do lots of things around his house in an interview recently uh, with Jay Monahan, uh, I know he's been busy in preparations talking with Jay Monahan and other members of the Player Advisory Council in preparations for this event. But beyond that, he's been in a steady sort of improvement over four years on the PGA Tour last year, finishing 38th in the FedEx Cup. If there's one thing that holds him back, look, he's only five foot eight and he hits at nine miles, yeah. but he's got a very quick change of direction. Todd Lewis just alluded to the fact that he played the final group, you as well, wasn't able to punch it through. Last year at the Texas Open, he was in second place after 36 holes, but went on to finish 23rd. Uh, he, he's good enough to get himself there, and he's far better than the results show, because strokes gain total, strokes gain tee to green. He's amongst the leaders on the PGA Tour, but he's 124th in world rank. It is very much a matter of believing in his talent. Sometimes it just takes a little bit uh, of confidence to sort of get over that and slow down, slow that transition down because he's very quick in the transition, which leads to some shots getting away from him under pressure. Only one round, but this was a masterpiece. It was a great day. Yeah, yeah. It was a great day. Yeah. It's not often you hit every single green in a round of golf. I mean, almost every single player on tour can remember when they do it and they can count the times that they've done it on one hand. And be an incredible story. I mean, this is this is a game we know that that has lagged behind in terms of inclusivity. Um, a, a win by Varner, I, I think, would help the sport immensely. It would be, and I think it would be one of the top stories, if not the top story, uh, given all of the uh, acrimony of 2020 thus far. I've worked hard for sure. I've, I've, tried, I've done my. I haven't just sat around thinking about okay. You know, I had the opportunity to, to try and get better. My season wasn't going particularly well up until um, the Players' Championship. So try to look at the positives of being away. Obviously, it's been a tough situation for many, for everybody across the world, obviously, and uh, some dire circumstances. But you've got to look at yourself and your own personal situation and try to think, how can I make the most of this, you know, very strange period in history? So, um, 
yeah, it was gave me a little extra motivation to work hard, just to try to find a level that I hadn't had or hadn't had until this point this year. Been working really hard. I, I've I've spent the first probably two months more so focusing just on my body and, and getting rested, and then the last month I, I started playing more, and then I started practicing a lot more. The last three weeks, I just tried to not overdo it because I knew it was a long long time off, and um, and I didn't want to do too much because I've never had this opportunity of taking this much time off. So I wanted to use it to my advantage to where once I did get out here, I was hungry again and, and I was ready to go. I essentially had an off season to look back on. You know, five weeks of play, um, recognize what I was doing better than last season, recognize what still needed to be worked on and adjusted. And uh, it's one thing to do it. It's another to then go out and trust it in tournament play. And I haven't really had a lot of super competitive rounds other than the last couple weeks, um, trying to get games going with guys here in town. Uh, and I think that was beneficial, but it, I should be able to trust it more and more as we continue to play more rounds. But yeah, just some some swing stuff, just catching the club up and just simple stuff that, that professionals do well that I wasn't doing well. Do I think I'm capable of shooting five under out here? Well, yeah, of course I do. Um, do I feel like I'm capable of doing it, you know, in a, one of the best fields of the year on the PGA Tour? Well, I think I'm capable of that too, but did I expect to do it? <laughs> maybe not. You know, maybe not. I've had a long time off, and uh, my game really hadn't been that great this year, but I've had a long time to practice, and I uh, have been practicing. Um, you know, the golf ball doesn't really know who you are or how old you are. You know, I think if you can just execute, um, sometimes good things happen. What a day. And I think you can just get a sense of it. I mean, we're supposed to be unbiased here, but I just can't help um, be unbiased when it comes to Tom Lehman. He's really one of the loveliest people in the yeah. world of sport and certainly in the game of golf, former Ryder Cup captain. Good for him. Great to see him get off to a great start. And it was a great day. It really was. All golf, the way around. Golf is back. Good I to be back. Fun. For Brandel, I'm Rich. We'll see you tomorrow.